I am a teenage girl. What do you think of when I say this? Instagrams, boyfriends, trendy clothes, ignorance of current events? Well, what if I told you that I'm none of these things? This is the problem with the thing we all know as labeling. We do it, consciously or not, every single day. Every, everything from our occupation, to our gender, to our age, is all some sort of label. Labels didn't used to be such a big deal, though. But things have changed. Look at any modern newsfeed, and you quickly see the, see the rapid expansion of things like political correctness or social justice. In my opinion, these things are being overapplied everywhere. Even my teacher felt the need to preface Martin Luther King Jr.'s famous I Have a Dream speech to say that the language used in it is no longer appropriate. What was this language? One simple label. Black. The mere mention of the word black in reference to a person can bring any conversation to a screeching halt, or at the very least, alienate you from the people around you. Even describing objects as black has become consciously uncomfortable for my generation. I was in class the other day, and a fellow student mom was describing what they did at the school yesterday. They were talking about coming out of a restaurant, they said it. It was really black outside. Half the class neighbor and the other half started freaking out. The teacher came over and told the student to use another descriptor. Now, you might think that black is the only word that has this kind of stigma around it. It's not, weirdly enough. Another great example I can think of right now is another word that's been in the news recently. Gay. The word gay is sort of transitioning into that type of word right now. A portion of my generation used the word gay as an insult. Dude, that's so gay. But another portion say with pride. They are gay. That's what they are, what they identify as. And they don't mind being referred to as gay. But people hate being referred to as black because the label black is so much more severe. My parents, when I was younger, went to great lengths to avoid describing anyone by their skin color. They would use hair color, eye color, clothing, even weight if they had to. Anything but skin color. And now, when I talk to them about it today, they can't give me a clear answer as to why they did that. I don't think people realize how sensitive we are becoming to labels like this. Nowadays, using the word Negro in reference to a person is considered incredibly racist. But we can forget the fact, however, that Martin Luther King Jr. used this word to describe himself and other people of his race. So why has this word become so bad? Two words, historical connotation. Us humans have a long history of separation based off ethnicity and skin color. It's a long and terrible history, and modern people fear that when they, in a sense, label someone by their skin color, they're bringing that history back. So by describing diversity, we are pointing out differences. But we aren't born thinking this is bad, though. Little kids have no problem describing themselves or their friends by skin color. It's only when they grow up to society to teach them that this is wrong. The history that goes along with these words is bundled with offensive stereotypes that the media has clung on to. These stereotypes associated with the words black or white didn't come from the composition of the words themselves, though. We gave these words meaning. Ever search up the word peruse? It's not an old-fashioned word, but it's still in use. Anyways, the first definition defines peruse as to read through something with great care. But here's the kicker. The second definition, right underneath the first one, says to look over something in a casual manner. The Latin for this word doesn't lie. Per means thorough, and use means use. So why does this word have two completely opposite meanings? Because we use this word a different way. We gave this word a new definition. One that completely contradicts its original one. So my question is, if we have this kind of power, then why can't we change the meaning of words that are now harmful labels back into positive ones, or even back into just descriptors? A lot of people think we can't, and have given up, for example, on the word black entirely as a descriptor. They instead use people of color. That's a long good, but 
color also has a history in segregation. How long before color becomes a bad word as well? There will always be diversity in our society. That's just the way things work. But if we aren't allowed to acknowledge that diversity, then what's the point? If we all are the same when we turn off the light, then why do we celebrate Black History Month, or Women's Day, or Gay Pride? We can change words. It will take time. There will still be people who, who use these words through negative connotations. There will still be people who hold on to the idea of political correctness. But I believe there will be a day where people do not feel awkward and ashamed when they describe someone's skin color. Or acknowledging someone's disability is not ableist. Or describing someone with their gender is not sexist. And finally, we want to prevent other words from gaining a negative connotation as well. We can do this by consciously watching how we use fledgling terms like transgender. Let's keep this word positive so that my generation and future generations can use this word to describe and identify themselves. We want to discard harmful labels, but not the words themselves. We are diverse, and that's a label worth having. But then again, what do I know? I'm just a 14-year-old girl. Thank you.